Splash Mountain. It may look peaceful and fun, but the only way out is a long way down. Splash Mountain at Disneyland. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Grand Circle Tour podcast. I'm your conductor, Dan Hansen, and I'm here with my one, two, three, four favorite co-hosts. Well, three favorite and one least favorite (laughs) co-hosts. We have ladies first. Chris, Chris, how are you today? I am am pretty good for uh, what's going on. So, yeah, hanging in there. Hanging in there. Recording a little earlier in the morning than we're used to right now. So I apologize, yeah. passengers, if we sound a little sleepy. Uh, Holly? Holly, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you. Very good to hear. And we have Jason with a new haircut. Skipper <laughs> Jay, how are you? Aloha. I am totally bald, but the passengers can't see it. <laughs> Dan, you missed a trick because whenever I say ladies first, I go right to George. <laughs> he was waiting out. for it. <laughs> I'll he do you one better. You saved me for last. I'll do you one better. I'm not even going to introduce George on this episode. Let's just go right into the top. No, I'm joking. George, how are you today? Doing good. And yes, I still have hair on my head. Passengers, you can't see it. And trust me, you don't want to. So- <laughs> <laughs> no, he kind of looks like the Unabomber. You do want to see it. Oh, oh God, the Unabomber. <laughs> George's hair is, is is something to see, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you. We didn't even recognize Jay when we got on to record today. Is- yeah, really. I'm like, who is that guy? There's no haircuts in the Jungle Cruise right now, and it's summertime, so I just uh, buzzed it all off yesterday. But the most depressing part is when I took it all off, but I looked down at the floor and went, oh, it's all gray. <laughs> <laughs> When I do it, I say, oh, there's not that much on the floor, even though I just popped it all off. So, oh, that's too funny. Jeff. Well, passengers, welcome to a detour episode. Uh, one of these in the series that we're doing on our favorite attractions. And today we're going to be discussing my favorite attraction, and that is none other than Splash Mountain. Uh, George, I think it's your favorite too, right? If you have to pick one. Yes, definitely. And it was uh, the winner... For the uh, science experiment that you did with uh, well, well, me and Jay. First... Sorry, Jay, I have to just rub it in there for a second. Wait, you guys <laughs> robbed the tower? <laughs> the first science experiment show, because the second science experiment show actually dropped this week with Chris and Holly. Yeah. And then who did Splash at some point? I forget where that was. But... <laughs> I, sorry, I Splash. It pretty far. Yeah, it, it did. did go pretty far. It went pretty yeah. far. So... Um, so why don't we just get right into it and talk a little bit about the history of Splash Mountain. So who thought up the idea of Splash Mountain, guys? I'll quiz you. Does anyone know? Uh, well, it, I believe that it was Imagineer Tony Baxter. You're correct, Chris. Do you know the story behind it? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, legend has it is it came up, I think it was like, it was in the early 80s, right? I guess it was the early yeah. 80s. Um, yeah. And he thought of it as he was stuck in rush hour traffic. Oh, um, that, okay, yes. I do, that, I did I actually had that written down someplace and I lost my original notes, <laughs> so I had to rewrite it all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think he, they said it was a Santa Ana freeway or something. Yeah. Oh, really? It was, uh-huh. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> that was it, yes. And that's pretty funny because being stuck in traffic and thinking about a water attraction going 40 miles. Maybe he had to use the restroom while he was stuck in traffic. Maybe he I was going to say, I always think about Disney, Disneyland when I'm stuck in traffic. Yeah. I mean, you think about <laughs> how I would rather be. You think about how great the job of an Imagineer is. I mean, can you imagine, like, that's, your, that's what you should be. I, that's what, uh, you're right, Jay. That's what I think about anyway. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. Yeah. So it's just that his ideas could come to fruition, which is yeah. awesome. Right. Yeah, at the time, uh, because they were going to give all of Tomorrowland to George Lucas, and the old carousel building was going to be Plectu's Intergalactic Review, and they had to get all those animatronics out there. 
because the budget for Splash Mountain had, had doubled from 35 million to 70 million. They were like, well, hey, we've got these great Mark Davis designs over here. Let's just steer them on over to the other side of the park. Yeah. Well, the audio animatronics came from um, America Sings, wasn't it? Is that how mm-hmm. it works? Yep. So I think what had happened, and you guys could correct me if I'm wrong here, but the story that I know is that there was a little bit of a problem with, um, what was it, Bear, Bear Country? That's what the, that's what it was, what's it called, Bear Country? Yeah. Right, that area with uh, Country Bear Jamboree, um, which had failing attendance. And then there was also a problem over uh, in American Sings where that had failing attendance. And they had all these awesome animatronics. So the plan was to take the animatronics from America Sings and put them into Splash Mountain. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. I will say, though, comparing Br'er Fox's animatronic with Disneyland of Walt Disney World, it, I'm, I'm sorry, it's horrible. <laughs> Dude, I'm have- sorry. I'm going to stick up for Disneyland here. Disneyland's version is so much better than Magic Kingdom's. Boom. Sorry. Done. (laughs) See, so, I mean, not that I've ridden the one in Disneyland that often, but I think, in my opinion, you know, I think there's like a clear definition between pirates, between Disneyland and Disney World. Oh, yeah. With with Splash, in my opinion, I think they're pretty close. I mean, there's obviously similarities. If you if you want to get wet, go on Disneyland's. If you just want <laughs> to for throw, sure. just, just stick yeah. with Disney World. But I'm just speaking as far as with Briar Fox that the animatronic he looked like he aged seventy years. Well, it was three years later, so they did <laughs> advance a lot more. So there you go. A lot of technology. Yeah. In those well, yeah. animals, you know, well, they don't really age faster than people, though, do they? It's the original Bear Fox I don't know from the, the 1940s film. It's just, you know, he yeah. ages in real time, unlike Mickey. <laughs> for which, for me, I actually knew about the attraction before knowing the movie. So did right. I. Right. Really? Yes. Oh, I feel was, old. Thanks. It was based on Song yeah. of the South, right? Yeah. So, right. right. Yeah. Who's what? I haven't seen that, but I. Oh, I own it. I watch it. I'll, all I'll email you a copy. I'm. <laughs> Jay may I know or may what not it have looks. I know what it looks like, but I have not. Oh my gosh, it's so well, good. It is. It's a. It's a really good movie. I'm sorry, people can. Disagree it's with me. It's not but... a good movie. It's totally hokey. It's totally from that time period. It looks it's it's like cute. A happy, and and there's some day. fun stuff, but it's totally a 1940s movie. So but that's you know what you're what? walking into. If you don't like yeah. old movies, that's what you're getting. But you know what? When I was a kid, and I'm a lot older than you guys are, um, I had a book series, the Uncle Remus stories that my mom had bought like years before for my brother and sister and I used to read those all the time and they were classic like fairy tale stories really and Mm -hmm. when I got to go on Splash Mountain for the very first time I was taken back to the time when I was a little girl reading those books and it all brought it to life for me so it, it is it's amazing so I am a yeah. fountain of useless Disney knowledge, so just for fun, <laughs> um, they were worried about the implications the movie has when they were coming up with the ride, so they re-released the movie to theaters in the 80s, right it's before Smash Mountain came out. Yep. Yeah. And it made money. Yep. Cool. Yeah. But I don't think Song of the South is anywhere near that Splash Mountain uh, memorabilia now, or never talked about at all Mm -mm, it's not that's what it is so yeah it's like they're they're separate they're separate subjects in a sense where they've divorced the care yeah you're fine if they talk about splash mountain they're talking about splash mountain if you're talking about song of the south you're talking about song of the south there's like no yeah connection with them done a good job divorcing those characters from that movie they definitely they definitely (laughs) have divorced the characters yeah so sad. <laughs> hope, I hope the children are okay. So speaking of characters, do you know how many audio animatronic figures are in Splash Mountain? Mm. I read it, but I did not write it down. So I do not remember. But 
There are 68 dancing critters to entertain you. <laughs> 68. I I did not realize that until I actually read that. That's, I would that's have thought crazy. a lot that's more. Okay, right. now I, I have one for you. Now, that's Orlando's animatronics. Do you know how many there are at Disneyland's? Ooh, probably more. Yep, there is more. Yeah. I do there not know. 103. Wow. Okay, that 103, and I'm going to one-up you here, George, because that's what I like to do. How many... <laughs> how many... How many were there... Um, right before it opened. There's actually 10 more. But they really? eliminated 10 because they didn't think they went with the story. But And you think about that, right? So there was 113 to start, and wow. someone went through it and said, you know what? These 10 out of 113 don't fit. <laughs> That's how much thought was put into it. Right. I wonder, I wonder why they're so few, more, you know, so such a lower number at Disney World. And there is a Disneyland. Why would Disneyland they... literally had a carousel theater full of animatronics oh, wow. they had to get yeah. rid of. Yeah, um, and remember, Disney World, I mean, they, they put the Disney World attraction together pretty quickly. I think it opened mm -hmm. exactly three years to the date as Disneyland did. So mm -hmm. they, they um, made the plans, made the animatronics, poured the concrete, did everything in those three years. So money, I'm sure, was a big factor of making those animatronics. Yeah, because I wonder how much each of those animatronics cost. That would be interesting to find out. Because, yeah, that's that's a big, big expense, yep. I'm sure. So construction cool. of Disneyland was, was April of 1987. And like Jay said, the budget rose to over $70 million. Imagine that. that. The entire park of Disneyland cost $17 million. And yeah, that's crazy. I mean, we thought when we did the um, Space Mountain um, detour that, you know, 18 million for that one was more than the whole park was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we thought that was crazy. <laughs> so one of my favorite uh, Michael Eisner stories has to do with Splash Mountain and I'm sure you guys all know this story, but I'll say I'll I'll tell the passengers you haven't heard. The original name of this attraction was going to be the Zippity River Run. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and why was it changed to Splash Mountain? Who knows? Because of okay. they wrote it. <laughs> no, that's not true. Jay, we have you uh, because Michael Eisner was very fond of the movie Splash. That is true. He wanted really? to cross promote yeah. the movie mm -hmm. Splash with Splash Mountain. And actually, Eisner urged them to add a mermaid scene to <laughs> Splash Mountain. Oh, God. And that's when the Imagineers put their foot down and said, no, oh, no. Yeah. Where was the land happen? Well, stuff. I mean, if they want to save money and cut costs with everything, they could just move the dead mermaid skeleton from Pirates over. <laughs> Oh, can we call it Brer yeah, Ariel? Would that make it Brerial? Brerial. Brerial. I had not heard that story. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, I, so, I so they they went with Splash and they added Mountain because that's the uh, you know that's the word that Disney uses for our, you know mm -hmm. big attraction. So then that's how you got the name Splash Mountain, and it, it went right because Splash everyone we splash down. Um, yeah. The marketing ploy to help the movies splash. Too uh, funny. And all right. And it's one of those iconic pieces of Disney where when you walk into the land, you see the top of Chickapen Hill and you just automatically resonate to that notion okay, this is Splash Mountain. Mm -hmm. Well, I, w I wanted to talk about, like, you, you said Chickapen Hill, but I wanted to just go around real quick um, and ask everyone what their favorite part of the attraction is. Because in reality, my the reason I love this attraction so much is that my first time that I went on it, um, I loved, I'll be honest with you, the animatronics, but the length, the, 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 the yes. fact that it was almost 10 minutes long, um, and probably even more than that from like, you know, load time to actually mm -hmm. getting off the attraction. Yeah. The, the fact that we were on this attraction for so long, to me, that was like, wow, how come every attraction can't be like this? Right. And I'm a big log flume guy, too. I, I know it's mm -hmm. log flume's a hokey, and that's one of the reasons why there was some talk, actually, of, of them not even building this attraction, because some of the Imagineers thought that log flumes weren't something Disney should do. 
um, in the uh-huh. beginning. But um, anyway, the reason that it's it's so long is because there's different segments, right? So let's just go around the room. What do you what's your favorite part of the attraction? It could be the drop. It could be you know one of the one of the scenes. What do you think, George? What about you? For me, it would have to be. It's not one specific, but scene but just the scenes where you see the animals singing and going on the journey with Br'er Rabbit to the point where Fox catches him and then you're, it's that anticipation knowing that you're going to drop but just not knowing when because I remember the first time I rode the ride I thought it was because I live in Pittsburgh and we have a ride at uh, Kennywood Park it's an old traditional style amusement park it's called the Pittsburgh Plunge and it's basically you load into the vehicle, goes up, goes around, <laughs> comes down, that's it. That's the ride. So my very first time on Splash Mountain is I thought that's basically what it was. You load into the log, you go <laughs> up the hill, you come down, and that's it. That's the so ride. You were stressed out for 10 so minutes. It's like, <laughs> when is this going to happen? <laughs> so yeah. I was riding it, and I'm thinking, this is nice. This is great. This is refreshing. How long is this thing? Where is the track? <laughs> <laughs> but I say that in a good way. So I would yeah. have to say it's just the storyline of going with Br'er Rabbit and seeing all the animatronic animals sing, you know, and it's it's that anticipation that leads up to the drop. Not necessarily the drop itself, but the anticipation. You know, when I when I took Connor, my son, uh, on it for the first time, and it's always great to see a child ride it for the first time, right? Because mm-hmm. we don't know what's going to happen. We've been on it hundreds of times. Um, but I remember getting off the attraction and him explaining to me the story of daddy, Br'er Rabbit tricked them by going into the briar patch. And he's like trying to like make me understand it. I'm like, Oh really? That's what happened. Like, that's why he went down the falls. I'm like, yes, that's right. And, and, and being cute. that you brought it up, but I'm not going to mention it right now about taking a child on splash mountain. That's going to be my uh, story of the week. So oh, boy. Oh, right. <laughs> That there are some pluses and some negatives about taking a child on. I thought you were looking at me when you said taking a child on Splash Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> so what about you guys, Jay, Chris, Holly? What's your favorite part of the attraction? Um, my favorite is actually the drop. Yeah. Um, I never thought I would say that in a million years. But um, the very first time I took my kids on it, um, the one year my youngest son was too little, so we couldn't do it. And the other one's like, eh, I don't know. You know, he was still kind of young and he was hem hawing around. And I'm like, well, forget it. I'm just going to go by myself. <laughs> so we went, the next time we went was probably like two years later, I think. And then the younger one was old enough to go on. I think he was six, maybe five or six. Anyway, we go down, you know, and we're halfway down the drop and he looks at me and he goes, I want to go again. (laughs) It's not even over. (laughs) Yes. And my oldest and his dad are sitting in front of us and they're like petrified. And (laughs) so I was so happy that I created a Disney monster in my younger (laughs) one. It was awesome. So cool. that that's really my favorite thing because I always think of that when I go down that drop is him saying that. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, so this ride is not one I usually say is my, one of my favorite rides, but it actually is. I just am not a fan of getting totally drenched. Yeah. <laughs> and the one at Disneyland, you you have to bring like change of clothes, a poncho, unless you're good with being drenched all day. But like George was saying, I just love the theme of it. I love the length. The music is just yep. so happy. Um, but I think my favorite part is Slippery Falls when you're just, you just keep like going on the little falls like I don't know yeah. that part is yeah. so fun and then obviously after the drop and then you go into the the room and they're all happy and singing yep. and it's it's over you know like I don't know that's just one of my favorite parts it's just so happy and joyous yep 
What about you, Jay? Say my favorite part, and this is silly, and this is definitely why I made Jungle Skipper, um, because the ride's been <laughs> open for 31 years now. And it's the part where Br'er, Burberry is hanging from the ceiling. Yes. Because yeah. for 31 <laughs> years now, <laughs> we'll float by. I'll, we'll float by. I'll point at it and go, Br'er butt. Ah. Br'er butt. <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah. There you oh. go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take my skipper jokes with me everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So my favorite part is, is the laughing place scene. I don't know what it is about that, but when they sing, everybody's got a laughing place. There's just something that like makes me smile. That's like that's when I know I'm at the Magic Kingdom. And you, you have know? to sing, right? What's that? You have to sing. Yeah, I have to sing have to, and totally. Yep. And um, you know, it's funny because like my wife loves the beach and she always says it's it's her happy place. And then yeah. I always sing that song right afterwards, and then she gives me a look like, come on, like. <laughs> Well, and I love how they, I love how they incorporated all three songs into the ride. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, that's that pretty. <laughs> okay, here's another trivia question for you. How many gallons of water does Splash Ooh. Mountain hold? I couldn't even. This would be. I couldn't even sure, guess. Yes, I have no clue. <laughs> It's 965,000 gallons. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, probably around that, a million. Yeah. yeah. That, that explains the 26-foot pit under the ride just for the water <laughs> reservoir. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I That's looked at it and I'm like, oh, come on, that can't be right. But yeah. Well, and, I thought, and I thought our water bill was high. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the uh, pit, Jay, I think I've heard this somewhere. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I think they actually built Splash Mountain into the ground, so it wouldn't be it wouldn't look as the highest structure. It wouldn't interfere with the castle. Right. Uh, is that true? That's right. Didn't I hear that correctly? Yeah. So when they built the foundation, they actually dug like deep into the ground, and and built it up from there. Yeah. Interesting. Did so I it still that? looks tall when you're there, but you're kind of on a decline when you're walking up to it. What's funny is when you see an overhead of it, because it looks like such a wide, huge mountain when you're standing in front of it, but yeah. from an aerial, it's not as big as it looks. The attraction's actually behind the mountain in a warehouse. Right. Right. It's such a great feat of imagineering, how yeah. well hidden it is, and how you really think that the whole thing is contained in just what you see. Right. So the water pit, is it just like, a container underneath, or yeah, it's a it's a reservoir under um, under all the Splash Mountains. There's a huge reservoir. That's what they that's built first. Interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Because at night when it's closed, they drain all the water out of it. Yeah, it all falls into that, and that's the and then they just pump it back in. Oh. And I love how Disney does those kind of structures where it doesn't appear on the outside as it is the inside, but it's not just that typical building with a sign on it. It's it's noticeable of what attraction is what just by looking on the outside of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So here's some stats. The the final drop is 50 feet, 50 foot drop at a 45 degree angle, and it reaches mm -hmm. a maximum speed of 40 miles an hour. Yep. And then the one at Tokyo, it says it's a 60 foot drop. Yeah. <gasps> Tokyo. Is it really? And that mm -hmm. one has ah. been, and the funny thing with that is, that only requires 35 inches instead of the typical 40 inches. Really? For Tokyo. Maybe the, yeah. maybe the angle is less, the, the drop. The... Now, I know Tokyo has four drops. Disneyland has three. It's because everything at Tokyo is better. And... <laughs> I you believe... GCT trip to Tokyo. I believe the uh, oh, wow. Magic Kingdom and the Tokyo, <laughs> besides the angles, are mirror images of each other mm -hmm. because they built them right afterwards at the same time mm -hmm. and i'm sorry i still i still love disneyland's i really do but a person with bad knees it is so hard to get up and down out of those logs because <laughs> it's a different riding log than disney world's really and what's the what's the big difference it's well disneyland you have to get two. down into the log and it's, it's one a person it's a single oh, file. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so because, because 
Go ahead, Jay. I was thinking Space Mountain at Magic Kingdom, but that kind of okay. seating. Okay. That's Disneyland. The and thing Disney with World is two by two. Yeah. How you get what you said, George, how you get down in the front or down into the log. My son, my oldest son, uses that to his, his advantage. He always opts for the front. And he is so small, he actually hides Secret. underneath. <laughs> yes, he can get all the way down at the front of the log. <laughs> so it always goes like him, and then it's me, and then my oldest daughter goes in the back. And yeah, and I always get the short end of the stick because as we go down the drop, he goes all the way under there and it's just me right there. So. Oh my gosh. Like, You've got no shield. Uh, it's just you you are the water wall. Like, you yes, you are the there? shield. Like oh. it's crazy. And Disneyland's hurts my butt because right before it goes down the drop, it does this little slam to that is true. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's oh <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. the um, the reason they made the two seater is because they were building it for both Di um, Disney World and Tokyo, and they didn't think that the Japanese culture would adapt to the single file. Oh, that's, that's why interesting. they actually made it a two seater. And since they were doing mirror images, they made the, the yeah. same in Disney World. Hmm. I, yeah, I don't know oh, which wow. way I prefer. I don't know. I can't so decide. Well, exactly. maybe now with all this going on with the different restrictions of them reopening the parks, maybe people won't get wet anymore because if you're in a single seat, that they'll just have a big plastic shield in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just going to oh, take the I water out. <laughs> oh, gosh. I will say I like the double seater better because the two, I can bunny ear two people in front of me as opposed to one <laughs> for the there photo. I like the two seater better personally myself yeah. i just think it's it's nicer when you're on an attraction to be able to look at the person next to you yeah, I and it's just more <laughs> comfortable for me and that's why i prefer disney land space mountain over disney worlds it's it's one of those it's it's more of a comfort for me for yeah and there is a, a a better reason why i'm glad that i took my cousin on disney worlds than disney lands because disney land with it being a single seat I have to cut Everyone this. shares the, in, the the same log, where with Disney World, you have your own individual sections. Because there's a, a reason. You guys get what I'm saying? Yes. said, I, I'm going to have to cut this. <laughs> Hashtag George ruined my, my editing episode. <laughs> Hashtag George ruined the podcast. Thanks, George. Hashtag George ruins everything. Because I'm looking at Dan and he's like, look, he's like giving me a lot like, Ugh. dude, we're, we're trying to keep this, we're trying to keep our family friendly reading. And then there's George. <laughs> Uh, and, it, and it's totally like innocent and unintentional. I mean, he just starts talking and then it happens. <laughs> you can see how ready he is, passengers. He is like, beat <laughs> red. And passengers, the funny thing is, George does this with our group chats too on text. He'll just send random things to us. <laughs> like, what? What are you talking about? There's pizza left over. Come yeah. over and get guys, it. Guys, guys, we have pizza. <laughs> and then goes, I'm like, what? And he goes, oh, wrong chat. <laughs> Oh Thank God we don't get a text from between him and his wife. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so George, you have to have a story here somewhere. Yes. So this this Go is ahead. yes. You know so this was as I was trying to explain with Disneyland's log, everyone shares the same log where it's all open with the seats. But with Disney World, it's two by two by two, and it's cut off. Jay, please. <laughs> <laughs> Jay's already lost it. <laughs> so I took my my cousin on when we went down for vacation back in 2006. And we were standing in line. We didn't have a fast pass. And we were almost there. And she told me, she said she had to go to the bathroom. So I said, we're almost going on. We can't leave now. We were already standing in line for like an hour and a half. Oh, and yeah. I said, just, can you hold it till the ride is done? She's like, okay, fine. So we were in the very back of the log, went on the ride and everything. And as the ride's going on, as each scene, she's like, I really have to go to the bathroom. I'm like, okay, it's almost done. It's almost done. <laughs> but meanwhile, I knew that the ride was like almost an 11 minute ride. And I'm like, just get through the ride. Went through the ride. She was still enjoying it. She, she loved it. 
So we got to the top, did the drop, went around to the bottom, and all the birds were on the boat singing zippity doo da. And she was saying something to me, but because the the loudness of the the music, I couldn't hear. I says I I can't hear what you're saying. So as we were coming along to get off the log, she said, "Well, I don't have to go to bathroom anymore." <gasps> And it took me a few seconds. Uh, uh, I literally. This was Disney World or Disneyland? This was Disney World. Oh. So gosh. I ended up lifting my legs up and just like holding them in air. And I'm thinking, dear God, just get me out of this log. So, it's a double seater, dude. It's going to flow over. Yeah, who cares yeah. about your feet? Yeah. So. <laughs> what about your seat? Yeah. 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 What about your feet? Uh, so. I, we got out and I thought, and luckily I was fine. I don't know how it missed me or it, we were completely fine. And I thought, it's not us I'm worried about. I'm thinking who was next in line to get into the law. Yeah. Yeah. And I just had to turn around before going off the exit. And it was this little old woman. She oh, had no. a whole poncho on with open toed <laughs> sandals. And I thought that, that poncho is not going to do nothing for you, lady. I'm so very sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you know the re- you know the takeaway from that family's trip was that's the day Grandma Peter pants <laughs> because of you. As soon as they got on, they're like Splash Mountain smells funny. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't it's, have that normal. Is that Squish Mountain? <laughs> How old was oh, your cousin? Wait, wait. Uh, she was she was six at the time. Oh goodness. So, oh uh, wait, no. So this is the best. This is the best part. I'm not oh. done. So while we were walking out of Frontier Oh, that, that's Gate, not the part of the story that we No, were this is, this is <laughs> passengers, forgive me, but I have to. Chris is crying over here, passengers. You can't see it, but she's crying. Wait, so we, I was passing the woman with her daughter walking out of Frontierland. And this older woman, bless her heart, she had a hearing aid, so it probably she had hard of hearing. And all I could hear was her telling her daughter as she was passing. She said, I love the, and I, forgive me passengers, but I have to quote her. She said, I love the ride, dear, but there's this one thing. It reeked of piss. (laughs) (laughs) The funny part is she was probably that old that she probably went to the bathroom on it too. So (laughs) She probably contributed to that. (laughs) Hashtag Hashtag <laughs> cast members hate George. So, oh <laughs> my goodness! So, 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 uh, they really, they oh, really good need to, they really need to keep their their water clean because it really stunk. You know, <laughs> we we've been talking about some show topics, and one of the topics we're thinking about doing is best restrooms. Yeah. <laughs> is that, is that, that the best restroom in the, the park? <laughs> yeah, that's. The oh best my goodness! I will park. never ever look at that ride the oh, same when I go God. to get on and there's it's wet down so I'm I will, be I like, will say is to that you and, urine and to all you water? passengers if ever you get on Splash Mountain please look before you sit <laughs> oh, my I'm so goodness. glad I, I didn't sit with you on Spaceship Earth <laughs> okay George how old is your cousin now so let's see she that was 2006 you said Right, 2006. So, 20, she be, so she's going to be listening next oh. week yeah. and be like, oh is my goodness. Go, oh my God, I am mortified. <laughs> I'm going to text your mom. Make sure make sure his cousin hears this. <laughs> yeah, really? God. Oh, oh that God. is so crazy. <laughs> well, George, thank you for ruining my favorite attraction. <laughs> right. No. I'm, I'm never going on it again. Thanks, George. <laughs> Now, was that the back seat? That was the back seat. Okay, yeah. just remember. Okay. You, oh, great. So as it goes down the hill, everybody the gets it. Yeah. It in the back. So, I mean, if George has a story like that, imagine how yeah. many others oh, yeah. have the same type of story. Just remember, chlorine kills everything. That's all. That's yes. true. But it's not chlorine, it's bromine. Well, bromine. bromine. Yeah, that's thing. true. It's still it doesn't do stuff. the same thing. I, I gotta look it up. I don't know oh what gosh, sorry. I do know that I do know that it's different, <laughs> but just, I don't know let's why. Let's just it's count. 
Maybe like yeah. after you find this out, everyone that goes on Splash Mountain should come off and get a tetanus shot. <laughs> after this episode, yeah. attendance is going to plummet. <laughs> Oh People are gonna walk by and go, "Oh no, dude, that's, that's George. That's George's kitty ride. Right? I'm not doing that." So I wish that Justin was on this with us right now because he kind of mentioned something. I believe it was Justin about his wife jumping off. Did Did you guys remember that story? Yeah. That when she, as they were going up to go down the big drop, she jumped out of it. She jumped out of it moving. What? Yes, yes. So I wish we had that full story. <laughs> get that oh my story. gosh. She said something about she's not allowed to ride that ride anymore. And I'm oh like, well, I need goodness. to hear this. <laughs> Is it because she was scared? Uh-huh. Oh wow. That that uh, has to be that has to be Justin's next waltz up. He has to tell Yeah. That. Yeah, I mean, really. But my sister and I were on it at Disneyland and we actually broke down right as we were about to go down the the big drop and we oh, had wow. to get unloaded right there because they have the stairs. So next time you go on it, look and you'll see a set of stairs and um, yeah, we <laughs> broke down right there. So we had to be let out and wow, so what a was, place to break down. I know wow. <laughs> we were looking at each other because it was taking a long time to yeah. go over and we're like, Something's wrong, and then sure enough, all of a sudden, here comes the cast members to lead us off of it. We're like, well, that was a story. I swear it was a dream until my sister was like, remember the time? I'm like, I really thought that was a dream, but I <laughs> couldn't remember if it actually happened or not. <laughs> someone someone write that down for a show topic. Best nope, attraction breakdowns. Where were I you? Yeah, feel attractions like to be evacuated from. I suddenly feel like it's a great time to remind passengers it is a misdemeanor offense to disobey a ride operator, just so you know. Really? Is it? Yes. Really? Yes. Yeah, because of safety, I'm, a, I'm sure. Yep. Misdemeanor. Best break. And always remember, before going on any ride, try to remember to use the bathroom. <laughs> yes, please do. That's my four-year-old daughter. Every time there's a ride that she's unsure of, she's like, I have to go to the bathroom. I have to go to the bathroom. Yep. And I, I, I do it anyway. I always have to get out of line because I don't want that situation to happen because I don't know if she's bluffing because she doesn't want to ride the ride or yeah. she really yeah. has to go. So I'm like, I'm not risking it. Well, so on, no. on my part, I think what blended in most was it was a water ride. I think if it well, was yeah. a ride, that it, it, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So who's even to say if the water didn't dilute it a little bit? So I don't, I don't know, George. I'm questioning that trip on the people mover with you right now. Because <laughs> there was a little something on the floor, and I'm, now I'm looking at you. <laughs> we went through dark tunnels. You had plenty of time to fake us out. So. Oh, my God. Oh my was, that, was that the trip that you guys live streamed? We can go back and view the footage. I think we should. I think so. We should. Watch George's face. See if he yeah. starts to do that little kid like smile. <laughs> that oh, the, uh, the relief uh, smile, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, let's, I'll try to uh, reel us back in here. So, yeah, <laughs> who, uh, please, please do. <laughs> who, uh, anyone else have any, um, any interesting facts you guys want to share? Anything written down? I have, I have a couple of fun facts that um, might be new for some passengers. Um, did you guys know they pulled Bob Gurr out of retirement for this ride? I did did they really? really? Yeah. The zippity, the zippity lady at the end, the big river boat, is yeah. the largest moving prop ever created for a Disney park. And it's such an intricate um, piece of machinery because it's bobbing up and down, but it has 21 right. moving animatronics on it. So just the machinery and the hydraulics and everything to go into that, when it came time to design it, they couldn't figure it out. So they called Bob Gurr and Bob Gurr was like, I got this. Oh, wow. <laughs> Five minutes later. I know, I didn't yeah. <laughs> and then later on in life, Bob and Bob Gurr went on to bigger and better things where he was a guest on the Grand Circle Tour podcast. Yes, he was. That's so cool. <laughs> That's a cool story. And just another fun yeah. one. Um, when Splash Mountain was dedicated, um, that was the first time Michael Eisner let the public know they were looking at adding a second theme park to Disneyland. Uh, during the dedication, he said, with Splash Mountain, Disneyland is now a two-day park. And 10 years later, construction would begin for California Adventure. Oh, wow. Very cool. 
told you I'm a fountain of useless Disney knowledge. Very, very cool. But we love it. Anyone else want to share anything before we wrap this episode up? And wrap George up. And wrap George up. <laughs> in a diaper. His mouth. My goodness. If anyone, if anyone lives in the Pittsburgh area, if anyone lives in the Pittsburgh area and has some clippers, contact us. <laughs> Go say toilet paper in George's house. He may need it. <laughs> Well, uh, guys and gals, thank you so much for joining, talking about my favorite Disney attraction, Splash Mountain, and thank you for coming on. Passengers, thank you for listening. Uh, we hope you had a great time on this episode. We'll see you on the next one. Ken, take it away. If you would like to keep the adventure going after the show, be sure to like our Facebook friends page, Grand Circle Tours Magical Ticket Holders. While you're on Facebook, like our group page, Grand Circle Tours. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Grand Circle Tours Podcast, as well as on Instagram, GCT Podcast, and our YouTube channel, Grand Circle Tour. If you would like to email us, drop us a line at gctpodcast at gmail.com. T-shirts and other fun merchandise can be found at tpublic.com. Simply search Grand Circle Tour Podcast. If you enjoyed your adventure, leave us a review on Apple Podcast. Only one rule, make it good. All logos, sounds, songs, and music that are made by and for Disney and its affiliates are the full ownership of the Disney Corporation and are not, nor are they intended to be, the ownership of the Grand Circle Tour Podcast. Thank you for riding with us, and welcome home. Yeah.